Welcome to All Things Go with Patrick Peterson and Bryant McFadden, part of the CBS Sports Podcast Network. Man, the name says it all. If you're rocking with us, make sure you leave a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. And now you can leave us a five-star rating on Spotify as well. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can get alert of all our great content right away. Now, let's get to our awesome show. First quarter, it's a little different. We're going to tap right in to Around the League. Here's where we tap into the news coming from the NFL. Most recently, there's only one big piece of news we all need to talk about, right? The Super Bowl just happened in sunny Los Angeles, California. Outstanding ball game. The Rams beat Cincinnati 23-20. to I was out there in Los Angeles. Pat P was out there. We did our show out there, had a blast. It was an unbelievable experience. But now it's time to give our player perspective when it comes to the recap of the ball game. Pat P, what were some of your biggest takeaways coming from that game? Primarily speaking more about the end of the game situations that we saw from both sides. Oh, I mean, let me think. End of the ball game. Fourth quarter, the the Cooper Cup yeah. drive, the Cooper that led, Cup drive. Yeah, that was that, I thought that the fifty. I think that was a fifteen play drive, if I'm not mistaken. It was it the fifteen no or seventeen? Pass, the no look pass in that drive was just yo ridiculous. yo yo. Real quick, Pat P. Have you ever seen anything like that? Like oh, I, you know, I played against Matt a bunch of times. I seen him do that a couple times before. But in that moment, like they have the guts. Yeah, not in that moment. But I, I mean, he done it so much to where he's like comfortable with it. That's like that's like Patty Mahomes. You know, right, rolling out left, right, uh, right, and throwing it back across his body. He done it so much to where he's comfortable with it now. You know what I mean? I don't know if I can do that if somebody gave me a million dollars. Yeah, he knew. Hey, he he no look that sucker and put that thing on the dime. Hit but, it in stride. Yes, sir. That was a um. That was a, I thought that was a great um. Obviously, a great drive for them to go down there and capitalize and win the football game. Um. I think the Rams' defense, honestly, they just bowed up in the last eight minutes. I, I I don't think the Bengals didn't do nothing to play themselves out of the game. I, I just think the Rams' defense, they were just very, very stingy, especially when it came around like 8.30 left in the ball game. They had to yeah. fight for every inch of blade of they grass. Played, the Rams' defense played great all yeah. game. They did. In the first half, their but offense was a quarter. bit stagnant. They didn't really that do a lot. Quarter, yeah. In the first half, the Rams' offense can do nothing. Yeah. Outside when OBJ went out that ball game, they became stagnant. But yeah, yeah the, the Rams defense, man, was unbelievable. For me, that Cooper Cup Matthew Stafford drive was unbelievable. It you was. know what I mean? That was Matthew Stafford's best drive, and Cooper Cup was just amazing. But one issue that I have regarding the Bengals, you need three points to tie the ball game to go into overtime. Mm-hmm. The last possession. Your best running back is not in the ball game. Yeah. Second down, they tried a, a quarterback sneak or something like that. Whatever was it a quarterback sneak? Second nah, down. Nah, they they uh they ran the ball. Then they ran the ball twice. They ran it on third down to Samaji P. Ryan. Didn't get anything. I know. Yeah. I remember third down. I can't remember what they ran on second down. But uh, why they ran the ball twice? Why why is your backup running back in the ball game? Now think. Now check this out. Joe Mixon was playing pretty good football. Fourteen carries, yeah. seventy plus yards. Pretty good. Average per carry. He is the guy that should have been in the ball game. So third down, you hand the ball to Samaji P. Ryan. He's not your go-to guy. Joe Mixon is. Didn't make sense. Fourth down, you line up in shotgun. Mm. If you line up in shotgun on fourth and one with the backup running back in the ball game, Pat P., you know it's a pass. Yeah. And get this. (laughs) Your offensive line in the second half had no answer in protecting Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. So when you line up in that formation, us as defenders already – basically predicting what we're going to see. They're going to run something to the sticks. It's going to be some type of intermediate route. As a pass rusher, you know that as well. So now you're peeling your ears back. So that play for me, don't get cute. Get under center, put 28 in the ball game. Who is Joe Mixon? And run it. Because if you lose that ball game by running it, you can accept that a little more than losing by throwing it. Zach Taylor got too cute. Didn't didn't make any sense that you couldn't protect your quarterback at all. What makes you think you can protect him on fourth, fourth and one when you're throwing the ball? Mm. No, it didn't make any sense. Let's ha, ha, talk about something else that happened in that ball game. Unfortunately, OBJ go down 
early in the ball game in the second quarter. Devastating blow for us as fans of OBJ, but clearly for him. But Pat P, before he went down he with that injury, whoa, uh, boy. I felt a big like uh, I felt a big night coming. Oh, <laughs> Pat P, I felt I felt seven for one fourteen. Or seven for one twenty four and two touchdowns. Yeah, he was, he was gonna have a big night for sure. You can just see the pep in his step, the energy he had. You know, just the, you know, just happy to be in the moment. And, you know, he yeah. was definitely playing. You know, to his energy level. You know, as far as you know, getting open on routes. You know, making uh, big time catches. You know, I think well, yeah, he broke the ice. He was the first one to get the touchdown. So like you like as DBs, you know how that is. You be the first one to get a touchdown. Oh, it's gonna be a good day. Oh, you know what time it is. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it's gonna be a good day. <laughs> I, hey, I messed he, up. He bust out the moonwalk and everything. He oh, he moved like last hey, night. Did you see what he had on his feet? Yeah, I saw both pair. <laughs> you saw the first pair of pregame warm ups. Yeah, then you I saw, saw the, the, the white, the, the white, black. I mean, the white, the white, blue, and yellow ones on. With true. the lot, he had the lots like like the uh, the all yeah, black joints. And about. Cooper Cup, he puts put Cooper Cup's uh, swag game up a little bit too because Cooper had some. All of them had them. All the receiver had them on. Jefferson had them on too. When you put them on your feet, you got a ball out. You got a ball. Yeah, and it, they're saying that. Of course, I don't. I don't think we've heard the the di, uh, the exact information regarding his knee, but they fear that he tore his ACL. And the blow for that is that it was a, this is a contract year for him. He's going to be a free agent. Um, and you tear if if it's torn, it happened at the end of the season. Yeah, he ain't coming back to early <laughs> early next year, Man. like during the season. It's a, it's a, it's a tough I mean, blow. Yeah, everybody's different, though. You know, yeah, everybody's, everybody's different. different. Everybody's different. Hopefully, you know, when we when we drop this episode, clearly there probably will be concrete information regarding regarding what actually it was he hurt. But hopefully, it's not the ACL and something that can come back sooner than later. But I'm right, man. OBJ was he he he, he was ready to put on for the city. He was and he was going to put on for the city. That he was. Uh, but it ha- that's the nature of the beast in in the game we play. The uncontrollable. That's why when you get to that moment, take advantage of it because you never know what could happen next. Um, looking on the defensive side, question for you, Pat P, as a corner. Did Super Bowl 56 prove how difficult a job that corners have? And I'm not talking about the known of just covering wide receivers. I'm talking about the calls, the lack thereof that we get rewarded with. We're always the one getting hit with calls. And the play that I'm talking about, first play – after halftime, first play, Pat P, I had went to use the facilities in a nice stadium because that was in a nice suite with so much snack. They had all kind of food, food <laughs> and drink up there, Pat P. Hey, Pat P, that media, that meat, they treat the media real good, boy. Man, <laughs> man, I had, I had everything I wanted, but I'm in there using the facilities. I come out. I heard the crowd go wild. I ain't even got my shirt tucked in all the way. I'm trying to get to the nearest monitor. I look, I see T Higgins by himself. Like, what the freak happened? <laughs> why nobody, why nobody is around him? Then they show the replay real quick. I said, I know, that's Jalen? I said, wait a minute, something must have happened. Right. And then I finally saw, because, you know, watching the game in the stadium, you don't get the different angles that you might get from the TV copy. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But then I seen what happened. Then I go on Twitter. I saw the, I'm like, wait a minute, ref. Come on, ref. You can't miss that. You can't miss that. You, you, you not, you, you you cannot miss that, Pat P, because you know you talk about this all the time. You know they won't miss that on us. Dang sure won't. They won't miss that on no us. No chance. I don't care how late it come out, it's the flag gonna come out. Now, that's why I I, I, I I say this all the time. I wonder if they're like, how could the receive how could the, the the ref look at both guys? That's always been my argument. They can't. We gotta add some more referees to have. Uh, eye on both guys because we're obviously both fighting for a position to get to uh, a ball. But at, at the end of the day, that ref is looking at the DB. He ain't looking at the receiver. He's Pat looking P. at the DB. Pat P, I got something I'm going to read to you right now. And our what? listeners and our viewers are checking us out. I don't know if you guys heard this, but the an NFL official <clears throat> by the name of Robert Torbert said, this is what he said, Pat P. What he said? I, our rule is that if there is well, that's a the, uh, you know, you know, and a twist and, rough. and turn, there's enough for a foul. If there's just a rake across the face mask where there's not a twist and turn, even if there's a grab, there is no foul. The officials did not see any contact that rose to that level of a foul for a 15-yard face mask. Wait a minute. 
Wait a minute. So he basically say, if you don't actually grab the face mask and turn it, there's no foul. That's mm-hmm. a blatant lie. Because right. how many times do we see a runner might even, even when a wide receiver is coming up the line of scrimmage and your hands might get a little high, you scrape the touch the face mask. That's an illegal hand to the, hands face, to the face. Right. Or Hello. if you're rushing the quarterback and you graze his face mask, not pulling it, but if you graze his face mask, that's a person. Yep. Help me understand something, Pat P. I don't understand it. Hey man, I, I can't I can't elaborate on this, Mac. So you help me. It's the offseason, Pat P. Let it rip. Uh uh-uh. uh. They still you let time. it rip. Mm-mm. You sure? Yeah, yeah I'm positive. You can't well, I'm let it rip. That's BS. Robert, <laughs> that's BS. You need to stop that. So basically, you're saying it's one sided. Offensive players gets the opportunity. If I touch your face mask and don't pull it, it's a flag. But if you touch my face mask while I'm trying to look for the ball, by the way, just it's imagine okay. how that messed up the it's hand vision. eye coordination from, from Jalen trying to locate the ball and you hit him with his face mask. I can't even find the ball anymore. Right. Yep. Boy, that's we already BS, got it. We already got us. We already got to re obviously stay in position with the receiver. Look back for the ball and also still maintain position while tracking the ball as well. So like and keeping your balance and keeping your balance. And to like to your point, you could as soon as he graced his face mask, what he did started falling over because it 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 lost he he lost his balance because of his face mask being raked. And it's a hard (laughs) thing to try to locate the football instantly when you turn your head when you already run as fast as you can. Dome too in a dome with them lights. Yes, Yes, sir. sir. That's BS, Robert. That's BS. That's BS. Max but luckily it. enough for Jalen, you can tell it was bothering him the entire ball game. They were still able to win. Yeah. But you got to make that call. It hey, that's what that my wife was talking about. She's like, how you think he? I said, yeah. he, he be a little pissed, but he a champ. <laughs> boy, he was mad. He a fire hot boy. He was a bocce I hot. I know. I know that about it. I'd be pissed too. Oh, I'd be mad. Because you, know, you know everybody already going to criticize when you give oh, them yeah. a pass. They going to be like, you got beat deep. No. Yep. I didn't get beat deep. That man grabbed my face mask. <laughs> that means something. That means right. something. And other news, Pat Pete, another defender, a guy who I believe should have won MVP or Von Miller, Aaron Donald. There are rumors coming from L.A. that he may consider retiring. Mm. Super Bowl champion, three-time defensive player of the year, seven-time first-team All-Pro. Do you think he would actually retire? Man, you never know, man. I mean, because he's still playing, obviously, best football of his life. Don't look like he's losing a step at all. You know what it comes down to? If he if he really feel like he got something to prove, if he feel it, if he really feel like he still got that same fire, that same desire that he had, what he's in year nine, going into year nine next year, that he had in year five, year four. You know what I mean? Because that that means a lot, man. If you're not there mentally, I mean, why are you on the football field? You know what I mean? You're gonna get yourself hurt. You know what I mean? So yeah, and he and he know better than you know anybody. So if he's not there mentally, you know, if you feel like it's time to hang it up, he going out on the on the highest horse ever. <laughs> you know what no I mean? Question. What he got seven, seven first team all pros, three three time defense MVP, uh, uh, MVP Super Bowl champ. Like what else? He is it, it's just gonna all come down to like is he chasing more or is he is he satisfied with that one? Yeah, I mean, it's gonna all, all all come down on what he, what he, uh, what he wants to do, and all about the love meter as well when it comes to yeah. the game of football. That's why yeah. Tom Brady plays so much because he's the love never uh, changed. He always mm-hmm. became more motivated after winning championships or, or individual accolades. And uh, let's 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 talk about a guy like yourself, Pat P. You've accomplished a lot as an individual. Let's say if you're Aaron Donald, like you just won your Super Bowl. That's the last thing you didn't get off your checkbook, your, your check box. Would that really cross your mind? You as Pat P, all the all pros, pro bowls, the interceptions, and now you finally got that championship. Would you be like, you know what? I might consider retiring or you get instantly motivated running back. Like you just said, Tom Brady running back because I love the game. Man. I've been yeah. playing the game since I was six, seven years old. You know, it's not that you know that you know the game is not my identity. It's just if I'm if I'm if I have the ability to still play the game that I love and have so much passion for, like I, I don't want to cut myself short. You know what I mean? Because if I if I now nah, I don't want to have any regrets. You know when I you know when I do leave the game. Mm-hmm. So I want to leave everything out on the line because, you know, um, 
because like you said, I love the game. Like, I feel like sometimes and people think, you know, I joke about it all the time. Like, you know, I feel like when I play on a football game in a football game on Sundays, it almost still feel like I'm in college. It, it, I know I'm a professional athlete, but it's not I won't necessarily say it's not about the money, but it's just that how that's how much love I have for the game that my love is bigger than that for yeah. the game, if that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. And Aaron Donald might not have the same viewpoint that you have. Right. And that's why these rumors could be a bit true. You know, oh, yeah. his love everybody's might, different, man. Everybody is different. And mm-hmm. if he decides to walk away, number one, the Rams fan going to be crying for almost five years. Number five two, years. yeah, he had a great yeah. run. <laughs> he had a great run. And other news in the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 56, went a, a, a Rams win against the Bengals. Uh, two, two part question for you. Did you believe that Matthew Stafford, I'm sorry, Cooper Cup should have received the MVP? And with this championship now being won by Matthew Stafford, is he a Hall of Famer? Uh, the first part, yes, I believe Cooper Cup should want it. Uh, have uh, they got that right? I think it was had the MVP. Yeah, but behind him, Aaron Donald for sure. It was uh, you know, for me, Cooper Cup, Aaron Donald, Von Miller. Then Matthew Stafford, I, it, if it, that was my order mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, the the MVP um, standings. But, um, I mean, Cooper Cup, it, they rode him all year. Mm-hmm. And they rode him on that last drive when they needed him the most. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't no doubt in my mind that, you know, he, he wasn't only the best player, you know, on the field, but, you know, the best player on that, uh, on that Rams, on that Rams team. Um, all Sunday, although he was a little quiet in the first half. But like I said, when they needed him the most and quietly, he still ended up with a hundred and something yards, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And so, you know, he's you know, just they rolled him all the way there. And when they needed their horse the most, he ca- he ca- he cashed through. He cashed through for him. And the second part question, do I think Matthew Stafford is a Hall of Famer? I think eventually he'll be a Hall of Famer. Like I think, you know, um, uh, you know, his numbers are there. You know, I thought I, you know, I, I saw some of the stuff that Richard was saying about obviously having one Pro Bowl, um, no all pros, no all decade. You know, yeah, that's 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 tough. But the quarterback position is a uh, is a little bit harder to get those accolades than it is, in my opinion, than it is the cornerback or, or offensive line position, because, you know, so much ride on you and you got a Tom Brady and Rodgers within those times or Peyton Manning, those all bros, all pros and all decades are going to those guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. he was in a, he, unfortunately he was in a tough, he was in a tough uh, uh, quarterback class because if you look at it, you know, he got multiple 5,000 yards, you know, passing, passing seasons, you know, multiple high four, uh, four, uh, 4,800 yard passing season, you know, 48, uh, 48, passing touchdown. So, you know, his numbers are there, but, you know, the individual accolades, you know, may not be there as far as the all pro and, you know, all decade and pro bowls and all that stuff. But um, eventually I think he will get in. Yeah. I, I, I think a lot of weight. if he continues to go in this direction, he would get in. But if his career was to end today, no, see a hall of famer. No, it'll be, no, it'll be, it'll be tough. No. But no. no, cause even you said in the biggest game of his life, he would be fourth in the MVP pecking order. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's valid. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Some of the other guys that we talk about, you might say Eli ain't a Hall of Famer. And based on that argument, I can see that. But one thing you can't say is that Eli wasn't the best player on the Giants in the, those championship ball games. Yeah. He delivered. Yeah. That Matthew he Stafford had issues. He, he leaned more on Cooper Cup than Cooper Cup leaning on him. Right. You know what I'm saying? I agree. And, if you had to pick MVP of the Super Bowl, he'll be fourth. Best case, in my opinion. Yeah. He'll be fourth. And I think that would definitely uh, be a big time discussion when his time comes, if he was to end today. Now, a lot can happen between now and whenever he retires. He might win another championship. He might add some more individual accolades to his resume. But we have to wait and see. But right now, just winning a championship for Matthew Stafford, I do agree with you, Pat P. He's not a Hall of Famer right now. Let us know what you think. Should Matthew Stafford, is he a Hall of Famer based on what he's done so far in his professional career? Do you agree? Yay or nay? Let us know. Pat P, before we go to break, I got to hit I gotta hit you up this question. I saw it live. 
how did you feel? What did you feel about the halftime show? Did you love it? Did you thought it could be better? Tell us your thoughts about the halftime show featuring Dr. Dre, Snoop, Eminem, 50, Mary J. I thought it was fire. I thought it was one of the best halftime performance shows that I can remember. You know, I thought I thought that Janet Jackson was dope with uh in Miami. Yep. Um Beyonce was fire. She brought the Beyonce sucked the energy out of the uh out of the Superdome that year. <laughs> remember, that, that, remember that's when they had the outage, the power yeah. outage. Um this one was dope. Uh man, uh, a, a really, really nice one that I didn't have opportunity to watch Michael Jackson, you know, perform. But when Prince did his, I think that was in Miami. Was that in Miami too? That was that was 2000. I think that was the Lovey Smith, Tony Dungy. Yes. Coast. That, hey man, that and was. And it started a, raining. Yes. And it started raining. He played that purple rain, bro. <laughs> bro, everybody went crazy, dog. Like yeah. you spent, you know. The Super Bowl part has already be crazy as it is, but the old folks, dog, when they when he played that Purple Rain, oh no man, it was a block party. No question. <laughs> and, and and oddly enough, it started to rain. It started to rain. It started to rain. Started so to rain. Um, this one's by far probably one of my favorite ones that I had the opportunity to watch. But I will say this, Mac, you had me on my damn edge of my seat the whole halftime show. I already know what you're going to say. If you remember. Dre had paid like a little snippet pick of one of two pop songs. I think it I ain't mad at you. Mm-hmm. I said, here you go. Yeah, like, oh, you thought you were going to get that over. hologram? Yes, I thought the hologram was going to come out. Then he changed it over to, um, I forgot what song. I said, oh, man, I'm pissed now, man, because I wanted to see the hologram so bad, dog. Man, I thought we was going to get the hologram when they did California. Uh, man, California luck. If I, even if he would have did, I ain't mad at you. Everybody know that song. Obviously, everybody know California Love. That's a big time song. But if he would have played that, I ain't mad at you because the scene was already. It was a lot of energy in there, right? Boom, yeah. boom, boom. So you mad? You tell me you bring, I ain't mad at you out with a two part hologram. Uh, hologram. Ah. Man, the crowd would have went. They probably would have cried, bro. It would have went crazy. I'm telling you, they would have cried. They, 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 <laughs> hey, they would have cried like that man was there for real. No question, man. I was fine because when I heard, I heard he was playing the key, uh, the piano, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And mm-hmm. it sounded, it's dun, 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 dun. I said, Oh, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> hey, Pat Peeman, I was hyping up that hologram all weekend. Man. I was like, Well, we're going to get us a Tupac hologram. Man, man, you man, so I saw Pat Peep. I saw it live. When I tell you the energy in that place, man, man, listen, man. I felt that was one. Of, I, I agree with you. That's one of the best I've seen. Uh, the only issue I had with the Super Bowl performance, halftime performance, I wish Mary J would have performed two different songs. Mm. Like yeah, no more drama. She yeah. she 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 she, she sung it. Yeah. But don't give me that one, man. Give me something else that's a little more upbeat because everyone been, else was banging. She should have gave us just fine, fine. Oh fine. man, she <laughs> that just fine. Oh boy, I would loosen up my tie around my neck and unbutton yes, my sir. top button. Boy. <laughs> Man, she would have hit that just fine. But other than that, man, Eminem came through. Oh, 50 came, came through. through. Man. man, it was an unbelievable halftime show. If I had to rank the halftime shows that I can remember, I'm got Michael Jackson one, Prince two, and the one we just saw in Super Bowl 56. That would be my top three. That's big. I got MJ, because I was, oh, how old was I? And I think it could have been five, four, either four, five, or six. But I was a Michael Jackson fan. And I used to try to have my little white T-shirt like his when he cut around the neck area and cut the sleeves. You could easily <laughs> rip it, rip away. He had that rip away T-shirt. Yeah. I tried to rip away, man. And I had I ain't had no glitter glove, but I had one of them uh, cooking gloves, the, the, <laughs> the clear ones. I still one of my mama cook, <laughs> cooking gloves and put on my right hand. <laughs> whole hand, whole hand sweat. And I got Wait. sweat coming from everywhere. <laughs> with my white socks, them tube socks and them penny loafers with that penny in it. You remember them penny loafers? Oh, yeah. I used to have to put a penny in the penny loafer. Did that make any sense, by the way? You had to get a, you got to make sure you had to got the super bronze one. You can't get that dual one. No question. <laughs> I used to have my penny on heads. I never put it on tails. I put that penny on heads when I put it in that penny loafer. I would yes, need to come back out with some penny loaves. I rock me some penny loaves now with a penny. Penny loaves, where they at, coach? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pat P. But that's my that's my top three though. That's my top three: Michael, Prince, 
And what we saw Super Bowl 56, NFL did a great job in getting those individuals together on one accord, and they performed like no other. So that was a dope show. You guys really thought we were going to let you guys leave without giving you a school check-in? Stop playing us. It's time for school check-in. Some new news coming from Minnesota. Coaching staff updates. Addition. Of course, Kevin O'Connell expected to be introduced this Thursday. Ed Dantel, defensive coordinator. Mike Pettin, defensive assistant. Man, they coming through with some big time individuals. The Shea Townsend, a guy that we were hyped about, actually decided to go to Jacksonville. I spoke with the Shea on Saturday. He informed me he got a little bit, he got a bigger role with the Jacksonville Jaguars outside of what Minnesota was trying to offer him. Mm -hmm. So he decided to take his talents down in Duval. But Pat P, based on what you know, hearing about this staff, uh, you know, what do you know about? You know, Don, Donatel and Pitton, when it comes to the defensive-minded guys they have getting ready to run this defense. I know Mike Pitton has been around the league for quite a long yeah, time. I think his last wow. stop was a defensive coordinator for Green Bay, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Very aggressive. Um, speaking to Mike, uh, very aggressive. Uh, Want to get after the quarterback. Like, love his corners to be in the receiver faces, being physical. That's going to come off the edge and tackle. Um just a very, very aggressive mindset. You know, I had, a, had an opportunity to play against his team. You know, I'm sure I played against a couple of his team when he was a defensive coordinator, but when he was with the uh, the Browns, you know, those guys was our, uh, was pretty stout, you know, at that time as well. Just couldn't find a consistent quarterback mm-hmm. uh, to keep on the center. Um, and then uh, Ed, actually, he was a corners coach when the San Francisco 49ers was, were, uh, were recruiting me back in 2011. Yeah. And actually, man, Ed had an opportunity to grow a relationship over the years because he was still there under the hardball um, era that he ended up going somewhere else. I can't remember exactly. He, the, the last three years, he was the defensive coordinator for the Broncos. Yes. And what he was, he was because so he was he was somewhere before that. Mm-hmm. I think he might have was with the Bron- Bears, if I'm not mistaken. Gotcha, I think he was gotcha. with the Bears. Yeah, he was with the Bears because he was with Vic. So, you know, every time we played the Bears, I had an opportunity to talk to him. I mean, we always just had small talks, you know, all the time. So even when he came, you know, up here for, you know, training camp um, when he was with the uh, with the Broncos um, last year. So mm-hmm. you know, I have a pretty good relationship with him. But, you know, uh, for the most part, you know, I think he's a, a quarters guy, a quarter quarter uh, quarters guy, not a high pressure guy. Will send pressure, but rely uh, uh, on his front four to create pressure so he can play a lot of coverages on the back end, have more eyes on the quarterback to create more turnovers. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man, you know, very sound, you know, defense, wherever he's been, you know, especially in that San Francisco era when they had the Carlos Rogers, um, uh, Dante Whitner, uh, yeah. or should I say Dante Hittner? <laughs> um, yeah. Hittner. Uh, who else they had out there? Oh, they had, uh, they had a Brown. They had, I think Terrell Brown was a corner. Yeah. I mean, they, they just had a very, very solid, well-coached football team. So, you know, I know coach Ed is going to, you know, if fortunate if I'm, if I'm there, um, uh, next, uh, next season, he's definitely going to have, uh, one of the smartest defenses on the football field for sure. And I can tell you this much. I, I I'm, I'm real excited to see exactly what he will do defensively because he comes from that three four tree you know yeah. when he was a db coach in san francisco the years you talked about pat p they ran three four if you look at what he did uh you know being tied to vic vangio ran a three four mostly i think uh the last few years there in denver if not mistaken so minnesota has always been known to be a four three defense based defense mm-hmm. uh now with most offenses coming out in three wide receiver sets you usually in your situ in your sub packages more than anything but Seeing if he started, if he will, uh, you know, present some three, four elements uh, to the defense. So we have to wait and see. Uh, and other news. And I, think, I think, honestly, he'll have versatility to do that because we had some defenses last year where we, you know, played a little bit of a hybrid, you know, three, four. So he, uh-huh. he got, yeah, so he'll have guys like, you know, Daniil can easily, you know, stand up and come off the edge. You got, you know, you got Mike Pierce in the middle that can be a three, Five tech. Then you got uh, who else we had up there? Uh, DT, um, who can be a nose guard. You know. Then you got a uh, uh, young DJ who can play a who who can play a five and a nine. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you got guys that's interchangeable that you can you know have a hybrid you know style three four defense still for sure. 
Yeah. Okay. And when and you guys lost Andre Patterson, he went to be the D line coach uh, with the Giants. You know, what did he bring to the Vikings? Um, coach just brought you know a calmness to the defensive side of the ball because we all know Coach uh, Coach Zim is a very fiery guy. You know, you know, just very passionate. You know, when it comes to coaching or getting something done the way he wanted to get done, and it just Coach Coach Patterson, he's just the opposite. You know, just super super chill. Um, you rarely hear him yell, you know, uh, a guy, um, that, 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 that want to give you all the tools that he feel that you need to be successful. Yep. You know, a guy that definitely want to coach his tail off, uh, for his player success, you know, so I'm, I'm happy for coach, for, uh, for coach Dre, you know, I, I know he's going to do a, an amazing job over there, um, with the giants and, um, you know, hopefully I run into him, uh, We'll cross paths some get someday uh, again in, uh, in the near future. No doubt, no doubt. But one thing I can say, you know, when you get coaches, you're gonna lose some. And I think Minnesota, they're doing a good job in assembling a nice staff for this new coaching regime. Um, and mm. the cupboard is not bare. They got some spices already in the cupboard, ready to be used the right way. So hopefully, these coaches can put up, uh, you know, cook up a nice pot of gumbo with all the yeah. spices they got in the cupboard. Pat, you like gumbo? Love it. I know you. Yeah, I know you like them, but I don't like mine too spicy, though. Can't do it. Make my nose run when I eat spicy food. Yeah. <laughs> That's it for this episode. Thanks to everyone for listening and watching. We'll be back again Thursday where you can expect all things to be covered. Peace. Peace.